Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bishop's Choir is coming to you with two selections, and the first selection simply says, he keeps on making a way over and over again, always bringing me out. How many had the Lord brought out? Give the church say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the second selection says, God never fails. Pray for us in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's give the Lord a hand of praise again. I guess the reason why y'all so quiet, y'all waiting for the word, right? Waiting for the word. You ready for the word? But before we bring the word, which is the most important part of the service, we're going to have our pastor come. Let us receive Elder Allen with a hearty amen and a hand praise. Our pastor. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We have some high expectation. As the choir was saying, God never fails. We came here Sunday, and God didn't fail us Sunday. We was here Tuesday. Get the root out. God didn't fail us Tuesday. And now we here Wednesday. Amen. He still won't fail us. For those who are hungry for the word of God. Amen. We're so glad. We're going to get Bishop Johnson on the floor. But before we bring him, we have a few pastors that we're going to allow to come and give a praise. And, uh, uh, we have Pastor Rachel Augusta. We're so happy. Shy. Don't when it's time for the word of God. Don't be shy. Amen. You know how sometimes you go in a restaurant in front of people you don't want to eat like you eat at home. But as the word of God is coming, don't be shy with the word of God. Eat the whole roll. And if it's so good and you, you, you want to just say hallelujah, shout hallelujah. If the Lord find you and say it's me, Lord, shout out it's me, Lord. But let the Lord have his way. At this time, let us all stand. We thank the Lord for such a privilege to introduce and to present a great man of God, a, a sound doctrine every time he comes over the pulpit, and we thank God for it. Uh, uh, I don't take it for granted, and you shouldn't take it for granted neither. When God has given the ministers insight of his word, and then you, with the Holy Ghost, can receive the truth. You ought to praise God for it. And I thank God for Bishop Johnson because I believe it was uh, last year uh, he was here preaching and, and Dad had to go home. But he stayed with little old Jeff. And we, we ate and he began to just talk and we fellowship. And he, he didn't feel so big that I'm not staying with this kid. He stayed and sat down on the table and... We talked, and I appreciate. <laughs> Amen. That shows great humility. So at this time, we're going to just say, Bishop Johnson, Bishop Johnson preach, the word. preach the word. Give us, Give us. What, God what God has given you. In Jesus' name, In Jesus. Bishop Johnson. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. I want to first give honor to the Spirit of Christ and, and to my friend Bishop Stern. We thank God for him and, and, and now Pastor Allen. Amen. And I just want to say that, that it is a blessing that when uh, the pastor, one pastor, uh, go emeritus, that the church have another, a son, in the gospel to take over. That, my brothers and sisters, is a blessing. You didn't have to call in anybody, didn't have to have a week of preachers come through and all of that. And they come to the church, they don't know the culture of the church, they don't know the people in the church. And then if some of them, the first thing they do is take down the pastor's picture, put theirs up, praise the Lord. I done been through all that. I've seen all that. It is a blessing. And, it's a, and I thank God for how the Lord has 
caused a smooth transition to take place, and you ought to thank the Lord too. Amen. 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 That, my brothers and sisters, is a blessing. I, as I was sitting there, I couldn't help but to think about uh, when I became pastor, and my pastor was Bishop Ramsey Butler. He had pastored 51 years, and, and, I, and I can remember the first time before I became pastor, he called me. He called me one Saturday evening, and he said, uh, Elder Johnson, you're preaching tomorrow. I said, Bishop, I said, you got the right person? I said, maybe he may. He said, Elder Johnson, yes, it is. He said, you preaching tomorrow. I was shocked. And then later on, when he decided to give it up, and we, what we went through, and we had an election, and I ended up becoming the pastor, and I talked with his wife, because I didn't know where, but I, let me just say this, I knew where he stood on it because he called my wife up to, to keep the count. When he said, Sister Johnson, come up to the blackboard, there was a blackboard up there, and they kept the count, and that was telling the church who he was back in then. Praise the Lord. And I, but the Lord put me in, and for 33 years, you know, I have been in the church and pastored the church, and I thank God that if Bishop was here, he could look and say, that still looked like morning star. That still looked like, and I thank the Lord, I thank the, so I thank God. I want to thank God because I feel like I'm home. Amen, uh, this is my home church. Uh, amen, that's right, that's right. Thank God. And the saints, they told me to say praise the Lord to everyone. Amen. My wife, she said, make sure you tell them I said praise the Lord. So I'm saying it. So if you see her, you can say, well, yeah, your husband didn't forget this time. <laughs> praise the Lord to everybody. So we thank the Lord. And so we thank God for being here. And it's 47 years. This is truly a blessing. It's a blessing. Amen. And to be in your, in your midst. Amen. And also, we thank God. For all of you that came down to D.C., amen, we thank the Lord. We thank God for the fellowship that we have in the Lord, amen. So with all that said, amen, I'd like for you to turn with me to uh, the book of 1 Peter uh, and chapter 4. And we're going to read a few verses. Chapter 4 of 1 Peter. We're going to read that, that first verse. And then we're going to read verse, uh, we're going to skip to verse 7 and read down to verse 9. And then we'll skip from verse 9 to verse 12. And we'll read 12 and 13. So that's 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. Let us read. For as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that have suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Verse 7 but the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Verse 9, use hospitality one another without grudging. Now verse 12, beloved, think it not strange 
concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Amen. Amen. Verse 13, again reading for your hearing, but rejoice. And as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. And I'd like to use for a, a subject Tested praise, tested praise, tested praise. Tested praise is praise uh, where measures have been taken uh, to test its quality, uh, its performance uh, and reliability, especially before Praise is put to practice. Tested praise is praise that is under pressure. We know that anyone can praise the Lord when things are well, but it takes a person who is truly genuine and have faith in God uh, to praise the Lord when everything is gone wrong. We, we, we often speak and we quote what uh, the psalmist said when he said, I will praise uh, the Lord at all times and, uh, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And when we think about that, that scripture, it's easy to say, but it's another thing to do it. I was thinking uh, some years ago when I was younger, my wife, my youngest son, uh, and uh, before he was born, my wife had some complications, and when he was born, she went into shock. And, and he also, had some serious health issues. And I didn't know how bad they were until the doctor called me and he said to me, Mr. Johnson, he said, we might lose uh, your wife and your son. And, and I was just about ready to take my finals for, for Bible college, Washington Bible College, and so I rushed to the hospital. She was in shock. She didn't know me. She didn't know her mother. And my son, he was in critical care. And, but now I, I was also one of them said, I will praise the Lord at all times. I, and, and so when I, we prayed and some of the ministers came up and I went back to church and I stood up in the congregation and just put my hands up and shouted hallelujah. And I shouted hallelujah. Now although I was hurt and I was troubled but I had said to God that I would praise you regardless of the situation that I would, I would give you the glory and I would give you the honor because it's one thing to say it but it's another thing to do it. Amen. And God gave me the grace and the strength to stand in the congregation and praise God. Well, after praising the Lord and giving him glory, the Lord stopped by the hospital. And, and he touched my wife and she came out of shock and touched my son. And although he was the weakest of the children and 
He had the hardest time. He ended up being the Marine. He joined the Marine, and now he's a federal police officer. But see, God, God is looking at us. And, and I want us to also know the enemy is also looking at us. He's looking at our response to his test, the trials that we go through. God gives him permission to test us and to try us because the devil can't test us unless God give him permission to do so. And then he also sets limitations on how far he can go. So whatever we're in, we, we have to realize that the Lord has already looked it over. And, and that God will never allow us to go through something that we're not prepared to get the victory over. If we are in it, it is because the Lord know we have the right stuff when it comes to the Holy Ghost to get through it. He's not going to put something on a babe in Christ that, that's a, a senior person with experience should go through. He's already looked everything over and he know that whatever you are in, that you got what it take to get through it with the victory. And so, and now, but the devil is looking. He want to see what your reaction and your response is going to be to the pressure. Will you continue to give God glory? Will you continue to have a great relationship with your Lord? Because the enemy, any time he brings pressure upon us, he's trying to separate us from God. He want to take away our joy and take away our peace and take away our praise. And so we have to have a mind that whatever it is, God, I'm still going to praise you, even if it hurts and sometimes it's going to hurt amen because one thing about the anointing of God is not cheap there's a price to be paid for God's anointing people want to be anointed they want to have the power of God manifested but you know you got to know that there's something that you got to go through in order to get it Amen. And, and your mind, as someone said, as a child of God, your mind must be made up. As, as a saint, you must have a made up mind. There, somebody said, it doesn't take all that. Yes, it does. Amen. When you are hit on the left hand and the right hand, when you are in a position when you don't know what to do next, and you know you need to do something, but you don't know what to do. And then it looks like time is running out on what you're supposed to do. Amen. You got to have a made up mind. You got to have a mind so made up that you won't allow the devil to get in there and cause you to forget that your God got all power in his hand. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. Give him some praise. And... Hallelujah. When, when Peter wrote this letter, he was writing, the Bible tells us to some saints. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, it says that he was writing to some strangers that were scattered. The, these were saints of God that were under pressure, they were being persecuted. And because of the severeness of the persecution, amen, they were sojourners, they were pilgrims, they were, they were on the move, they were trying to escape the persecution that they were under. And it's amazing how that, that God, he knows every situation and, and he will give us a word at the time that we need it most. And so the Holy Ghost, it directs Peter to write a letter to them 
that he might encourage them. And he tells them, he reminds them that they are the elect. I want to say tonight, amen, that you're not just anybody. Amen. When once God saved you, you got to remind yourself that, that you're not just anybody. That you are a son of God. You are a child of God. And, and don't allow people to put you in, amen, and lump you with everybody else. Amen. I'm not everybody else. Amen. I, I'm, I'm a child of God. The, the God that I serve, amen, and my father has everything. And there's nothing that my God cannot do. And so Peter wanted to remind them that you're the chosen of God. Amen. That you're the elect. God chose you. God chose you by his foreknowledge. In other words, God knew what you were going to do once you heard the gospel preached in its fullness. There's no one that comes into the church and that God said, I didn't know they was going to be saved. God knows everybody that's going to be saved. He know us Amen. Before we was ever born, he knew everything about us. He knew all of our strengths and all of our weaknesses. God knew everything. Amen. And so he reminds them, you are the chosen. You are the elect of God. According, the Bible says, uh, to the foreknowledge of God. And that God through sanctification he has separated you. You have been set apart for God. You are set apart to do a work for the Lord. You are also set apart to glorify his name. And no one can glorify God like a child of God that's been baptized in his name and filled with his spirit. Others may praise him, but no one can worship him like us. Amen. Because we have the spirit of God. In fact, no one can really praise him like us. Because when we look back and we see where God have brought us from and everybody can look back in their life if you've been saved any length of time and you can see the change that has taken place in your life and when you see where God have brought you from you don't really need a cheerleader to stir you up all you have to do is just look and see where you could be and some of us could have been in the grave by now and some of us could have been on drugs or some of us could be on alcohol but look where God have brought us from and, and how that God took the profanity out of our mouths and, and put praise in our lips and, and no one can do this but the Lord himself. If you want to look at a miracle, if you want to see a miracle, just look around the congregation because there are miracles in here. I am a miracle. When you look at me, you're looking at a miracle. How God brought me out and, and he turned me around and, and placed my feet on solid. I'm on solid ground tonight. I, and I just want to say that I'm, I'm grateful for what God have done. I appreciate the fact that God spared my life. Because even when I was in the world, it was the Lord that spared my life. He kept Satan from taking me out. The devil was nipping at our heels and death was tracking us. But it was God himself that stepped between death and us and kept death at back. And the reason we're here is not because we've been so careful, because some of us took chances that we shouldn't have taken, but look at what God have done. God 
brought us out and God gave us a new way of living and a new way of thinking and some of us ought to thank God that we still got our right mind because the devil was trying to take our mind but I can say to the devil here I am I'm I'm still here and I still got my right mind somebody shout hallelujah give God some glory give him some praise and I Amen, amen. The word, it says here that, that through sanctification of the spirit that we've been called unto obedience and, and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. We, we are covered by the blood. I'm, I'm not just anybody. I'm, I am somebody now. And I'm, praise the Lord. I, I've got a God on my side. I've, I've got someone I can depend on. I'm, amen. I, it doesn't matter, amen, where you see me or how it looks. Uh, amen. You can never count me out because if God is with me, who can be against me? Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I can, can I preach? Is it all right? Because I feel like preaching that I I, I, I remember a situation years ago when, when amen, I had some financial issues and, 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 and the snatch man came and, and he took my car and repossessed it because the car was a lemon and I, I couldn't keep paying, amen, the, the price for the car and at the same time keep getting it fixed. So, so eventually they came and got it and, I, and, I, and, and it got out on the job and, and someone said that my car had been repossessed and I, I told them, I said, well listen, I said God's going to give me a new car. They, anytime God takes something from you, it's because God got something else to give you in its place. So, so I said, God, I said, the Lord, they said, no, because your credit is, is messed. I said, don't, don't look at me. I'm not just anybody. Praise the Lord. I said, I told my supervisor, I said, now when God gives me the car, I want you to say that Jesus gave it to me. Praise the Lord. I said, well, I said, well, yeah. she said, well, if, if you get, but you're not going to get, I said, all right. Praise the Lord. I, I, I come to tell you that I had a, a aunt that had some money and, and she called me over to, the, to her house and, and she said to me, she said, I believe that you're trying to do the right thing. Said, said I know you don't have a car. Said, said but I'm going to give you some money so you can get a car and so she first she said I'm gonna give you fifteen hundred I and and said well you think that's enough and and then she came back she said I changed my mind I'm I'm gonna give you thirty five hundred now this was years ago and I said oh yeah that'll do it I said I'll be I'll be all right, I'll be all right. went went let me tell you how good God is went went to and get to to the dealership and 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 the dealer said I've got to check your credit. Now on my credit, I had a lien on there. I had two judgments on my credit. Praise the Lord. But I sat up there just like I had excellent credit. Yeah, just go on, look on the screen. Praise him. Amen. I sat right up there. Praise God. And he pulled up, amen, my credit. And when he looked at the credit, he came back, he said, well, wait a minute, something's wrong. He said, I got to put it in. He said, give me that information again. He put it in the second time and, and he came back. He said, wait a minute, maybe this, machine, maybe this computer's not working right. He, he, said, well, he, he, so he said, let me try it a third time. He put it back in again and when he came back, he said, listen, he said, you don't have good credit. He said, you don't have bad credit. He said, you don't have any credit. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I said, I'm not volunteering any information. Praise the Lord. That's your job to find it. All I want y'all to know is that God gave me that car. 
I drove that car to the job and when I got to the job, praise the Lord, I went to my supervisor. I said, look out the window. I said, I told you. And I said, now who gave it to me? She said, Jesus gave it to me. Let me tell you something. Can nobody do you like Jesus? Don't you ever look at yourself like you just anybody else. Amen. You are a child of God. Give God some glory. Give him some praise in the house here today. Praise him. Amen. And so, so Peter wanted them to understand. Amen. To think of themselves in a new way. He tells them here. Amen. That the end of all things are at hand. Let me say to the church tonight. That we have come to the end. Now when Peter said this. That was the beginning of the end. But we're now in almost 2000 and years uh, since Peter wrote this. Uh, we're not at the beginning of the end. Uh, we are at the beginning before the beginning. Uh, this is the end before because uh, anytime now uh, the church can be raptured. Uh, the only reason why we're still here uh, is because God got some more folk uh, that he want to bring into the fold. That's why I never give up on any body that is still out there. If they're out there, God is able to save them. It doesn't matter how far it looked like. They may have slipped. I'm here to tell you that God is able. He can touch their mind at any time and cause them to come in to the foam and so we're at the end it's time the word of God says that we have to be sober we have to stay under control we got to realize the time that we're living in my saints of God we're in the last days and I'm here to tell you things have have changed huh? people are changing huh? God has already got enough huh? to bring judgment upon huh? this world that we're in huh? we're in an age where men huh? are changing into women huh? and women are changing into men huh? already huh? man has redefined marriage huh? and instituted put in place uh, by God Almighty. Uh, anytime you start messing uh, with the things that God has put in place, uh, you know God's not pleased. Uh, so time is winding up uh, and the devil know it. Uh, and that's why he's putting uh, uh, so much pressure uh, upon the church and the children of God. Uh, Never seen so many uh, the saints that have depression now. Uh, never seen so many uh, that are so down. Uh, but I've come to tell Logan Park, uh, lift up your head, uh, oh ye gates, uh, and be ever lifted up, for uh, well, the King of Glory uh, shall come in. Uh, the Word said, "Who is?" Uh, the king of glory the Lord the strong and mighty the Lord is mighty in battle I've come to tell you that he is the king of glory you're never in a situation that God can't get you out of it if the Lord allowed you to get in it he's already got an escape clause. Uh, tell somebody I got an escape 
claws. Uh, I'm going to get out of this mess. Uh, and you got to talk like it. Uh, you got to praise God like it. Uh, you can't be mealy mouth uh, when you're dealing with the devil. Uh, and sometimes you got to tell him to shut up uh, when the devil start talking to you. Uh, and I'm here to tell you he will talk to you. Uh, he'll wait till he get you by yourself uh, and tell you what's the use. Uh, but I come to tell somebody uh, there is a use. Uh, I'm the use. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, and I'm here to say uh, you got to give God uh, some praise uh, while the devil is looking at you. Uh, while he's right up on you. Uh, that's when you got to raise your hands uh, and praise the Lord uh, and say to the enemy uh, how do you like me now? Uh, Cause you thought you had taken away uh, all my joy. Uh, you thought you had taken my faith away uh, but here I am uh, and I'm gonna praise him uh, uh, anyhow uh, this is tested praise uh, is there anybody here uh, that's in a test tonight uh, then you ought to praise him uh, cause God is making you uh, I said God uh, is building your anointing uh, you can't have real good anointing uh, unless you go through something uh, but while you're in it uh, the Lord is building you up uh, somebody ought to say Lord uh, finish what you started uh, cause I want to be all that you want me to be uh, somebody shout hallelujah uh, uh, give God some glory uh, give him some praise in the house uh, uh, I done made up my mind uh, and I hope you made your mind up uh, that no matter what comes in my life uh, I'm going to praise the Lord uh, and I'm going to shout hallelujah uh, and I'm going to walk upright uh, and I'm here to tell you uh, that when the pressure's on you uh, the enemy wants you to get out of character uh, he wants you to live under the flesh uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, you got to put that flesh uh, on the subjection, because uh, your flesh is a mess. Uh, I say it's a mess now. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, give God some glory. Uh, give him some praise. Uh, tell somebody your flesh is a mess. Uh, you got to stay under uh, the blood of Jesus. Uh, you got to stay under. The anointing of God Cause I heard In the word He that shall come He will come And shall not tarry Tell somebody he's on the way I know you've been waiting on him But he's on the way He's gonna show up on time And when he shows up He's gonna show off Somebody ought to say, show off Jesus. Uh, say, show off for me. Uh, I've been calling on you uh, for some time now. Uh, I need you to show up. Uh, and when you get here, uh, I need you to show off. Uh, show off for me. Uh, show off in my children. Uh, show off in my finances. Uh, show off Jesus. Uh, show off uh, show off in my body uh, when the doctor said uh, they can't do anything else uh, show off Jesus uh, you made this body uh, anything you made you can repair uh, somebody shout hallelujah uh, somebody give God some glory uh, somebody praise him uh, tested praise
praise. Uh, is there anybody here uh, in a test? Uh, you ought to be the first ones uh, on your feet uh, and praise God uh, and say to the devil, uh, how do you like me now? Uh, I'm in my father's house. Uh, I still got a praise left. Uh, I still got some joy left. Uh, I still got a shout left. Uh, you thought you took it, huh? But I still got one more, huh? Somebody ought to give him one more, huh? Give him one more, huh? Give him one more for Jesus, huh? Somebody shout hallelujah, huh? Give God some glory, huh? Give him some praise in the house here today. Uh, my, 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 my. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I said hallelujah. Uh, and I want to say this. Uh, you got to take that praise home with you. Uh, you just can't praise him in church. Uh, and then when you get home, uh, have pity parties. Uh, take the praise home. Uh, take it into the kitchen with you. Uh, while you're cooking. Uh, every once in a while, think uh, on the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that he's done for you uh, and praise him in the kitchen uh, praise him uh, on the job uh, somebody might not understand uh, why you got a smile on your face uh, but you just took a walk down memory lane uh, and you know the same God uh, that brought you out last year uh, He's still doing business. Huh? Tell somebody he's still in business. Huh? The same one that brought you out huh? 10 years ago. Huh? He's still in business. Huh? The same God that healed you huh? on last year. Huh? He's still doing business. Huh? Praise him because huh? he's a business huh? God. Huh? Somebody shout hallelujah. Huh? Give God some glory. Give him some praise. And let me just say this before I take my seat. If you want to give the devil a black eye, you got to worship God when he don't expect you to. If you want to give the devil a black eye, you got to praise him when he thought you would lift and sit down on the Lord, uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, stand up uh, and give God glory. Uh, stand up uh, when he think you're going to sit down. Uh, shout it out uh, when he think you're going to keep quiet. Uh, whatever he think you're going to do, uh, do the opposite uh, and give God glory. Uh, give him praise. Uh, shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Put your confidence in the Lord. And keep right on praising. Keep praising your God. Because he is able. Tested. Praise. Tested. God bless you. That's my message. My message for the night. Tested prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Perhaps there is one. This is the water call. Everybody that can stand, please stand. Perhaps there's one.
that don't know the Lord and a pardon of their sins. Perhaps there is one that's just tired of being tired. You have tried everything. And everything has failed. I admonish you tonight to try Jesus. Maybe there's someone that the Lord is just tugging at your heart. Come to me. I love you. He's giving you the opportunity right now. God, to give him praise for allowing you to be here tonight. And allowing you to hear such gospel. Maybe there's someone that you haven't been down in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And I guarantee you, when you go down in his name, when you have that repentant heart, he'll wash you, give you a clean conscience. And he'll fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give the others. Are you here tonight? You've been searching and searching and searching. And you're in the right place at the right time. Why don't you come? Says the day that you hear my voice, heart not your heart. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? And he'll wash you, he'll give you a new life. Are you here? Are you here? able to save you. If I was you, I would make that change right now. Bishop Johnson, hallelujah. 